Hey guys, this is volume three. I, I feel like I should say volume because the last two videos I shot, I think were each like 20 minutes. And um, anyway, you can tell because I'm in the same outfit that I'm shooting these all on Sunday snow day. Um, but anyway, I'm getting right, I'm diving right into the point for this video. I said, the first video I shot was about distractions. Second video I shot was changing your view of yourself. And now this video I'm saying, change your view of other people. But it's also kind of, um, this is a double-sided point. You change the way you look at other people and you give less focus on worrying about what other people think. Um, or uh, this might, again, several of these things might dive into other subtopics later. Maybe that's what I should be doing. But really, do you ever think you're going to get a five minute vlog from me? Come on. Um, one of the big things that changed me in my, uh, in my job, in my, in my last job before founding this company, Um, but it's something that is really, and in fact, I had to do it earlier this morning, um, meaning kind of remind myself of this attitude or, or this approach. And that's the key, guys. I'm going to say this again and again and again because I have to do it with myself again and again and again. You don't just learn something once. You don't just go on a diet once. How many people have, um, and it can be some of the most successful people you know, some of the most successful bodybuilders, figure competitors, marathoners, whatever, everybody will have a time where they're like, oh, I fell off the wagon, I gained some weight back. And then, you know, they, some people do it on purpose. You know, some people take a break and they say, I'm just going to really enjoy, and that's their choice. I'm really going to, you know, I talked to somebody, um, you know, he's like, I take a break every, every holiday. You know, I, I compete and I do this so hardcore during the year that I get to like Thanksgiving and on and I just enjoy the time with my family. I usually gain 15 pounds. Again, this is coming from somebody that diets very strictly. So it's easy sometimes to gain that weight back fast when your diet goes to an extreme. That's this person's choice. But he's like, then I get back on focus. So you, you have to always have this attitude that anything you learn, you're going to have to reteach it to yourself. That's why they say, you, the, the type of person you are is usually going to be the, the product of the five people you hang around or, or what you feed yourself every day. So if you spend your time making sure that in some way you're always reading books that are you know, teaching you good things or good concepts or you come back to great CDs like this. I mean, I have a CD, it's a DVD actually, that I purchased during my divorce from Joel Osteen. It's a message from him that is I mean, I have had it now, so I got divorced in 2007. I've had that DVD for five, six years, and I will pull it out and listen to it because it just completely moves me. It reminds me of where I came from. It reminds me of that time. But, you know, you have to keep teaching it to yourself. I, I challenge anybody to say, oh, yeah, I just decided one day that I was going to be kind, compassionate, and forgiving, and I'm always that way. No. You know, whenever I find myself annoyed with other people, I think about what I'm annoyed with, and typically... If I turn that back on myself and go, are you ever that way? Are you ever judgmental, Kelly? Are you ever hateful? Are you ever spiteful? Yes. So what I'm choosing to do is, as hard as it is, whenever I get annoyed or pissed off or wanting revenge or wanting you know, anger, I just am like, okay, what have I decided? I have decided I'm going to treat people with love. I'm going to treat people with respect. I'm going to not you know, get in the mud and argue and be confrontational to, in, to, in that uh, sense and argumentative. That's what I've decided. So here's the thing. When you change the way, I, I'm trying to say how, what's the best way to get into this, what I'm talking about. Let me give you the example with, um, you know, uh, my boss at my last job. So many, many people have heard the story of why I founded Fit Financial. That I was, I was working at a job after a long period of being unemployed when in 2008 the company I worked for went bankrupt, you know, when the market crashed. And then I didn't have a job for over a year. And then I got a job. And I, <laughs> I mean, I've loved all my jobs, pretty much almost all my jobs. I've great, had great bosses. At this time, I just, I met a boss. And there's so many things here that, that I can even refer to some of my, what I'm talking about in my last video when I said change the way you see yourself. Um, 
at that time, I was like, I don't like this boss, we're different, he wants me to be a different way. And again, this is, I realized later, it was the way I was seeing myself. But it was also the way I um, was becoming paranoid and overly obsessed, not obsessed, overly worried about what other people think. I was overly, I, I made assumptions about someone's email or their text, um, and I would always assume the worst. And if you've done this, you realize that it can bleed over into so many parts of your life. So the big, the big thing about my boss at the time, and I can say this all to you guys because A, I've realized my uh, many, wow, my shoulder hurts a little bit. A lot of my mistakes, I've also told him this. So, so we're friends now, okay? So I've told him that, you know, I realize my, my errors in thinking. Um, it doesn't mean that I still don't think he could use a little bit more pep in his talk, maybe a few more cappuccinos and whatnot, but that's a side note. What I started to do is that for the first time, I was in a professional relationship where I wasn't getting what I felt I needed. All of my other bosses were that kind of coach I talked about in my last video that, go get him, Kelly, you're awesome, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, you got that, you got that meeting, that's awesome. And here I had somebody who was like, oh really, that's cool. What do you have over there, Bob? And I'm like, I'm sorry, did you hear? I just did this, I just did this, I just did this. Why aren't you excited about that? This is um, his level of excitement, it's like, and so because I wasn't getting the validation that I need, because I wasn't getting the high fives and the, the um, slathering of attention that I felt I deserved and that was warranted, um, I was like, oh, he must hate me. He must hate me. And then I developed this, this attitude of he hates me, everybody hates me, um, I'm going to get fired. And every single week I began to dread Monday. I would spend Sundays thinking about the fact that we had sa group sales meeting at 10 a.m., and I had my one-on-one -on -one with him at one o'clock and every single Sunday I would literally just dread it and I would dread every conversation every time I had to pick up the phone I'm like what's he gonna say he's gonna say this he's gonna ask me about this I didn't do this and my whole life was spent a talking to my friends about how much I couldn't stand that place and that person how how horrible he was to me how and do you think that I was spending I could have spent that energy and that focus on my business there and instead of saying he's so mad I haven't done this and, and, and spending the actual time it took to complain and cry about that and get stressed out all the time um, and, and, and have to get validation from other people in my life that yes he is a jerk I could have spent that time on other things. I could have spent that time on, um, you know, maybe giving him something that was going to make him jump up and down and go, high five, that's awesome. But I didn't. I just got mad at the way things were. And frankly, I built them up in my mind. I built up this situation that I can see now did not exist because I wasn't getting the, the high fives. I wasn't getting from him the the what I felt I needed. So here I was allowing myself to get stressed out, just utterly bent out of shape. It certainly changed my attitude towards him and towards everybody. Anytime I had to go to meetings in DC, I would fly and just just dread it. And and I would go and, and then I would come home and my mom would always go, so was the trip okay? I'm like, it was okay, it was fine. She's like, do you see that every single time you go to DC, you keep thinking, I'm gonna get fired, I'm gonna get this, it's gonna be awful. And, and then, I would go in and it wouldn't be that bad and I'd come home and I would have gotten through it. And quite often, I use that example as just life. Pretty much anything that we anticipate and we dread and we put so much power on it, like, oh, it's gonna be so bad, it's gonna be awful. I bet this is gonna happen, I bet this. What if this happens, what if this? And then we get there, it doesn't have to be about work, it could be about anything. It could be about, uh, you know, it could be about work, it could be about a relationship, going to a marriage counselor, it could be anything. Um, you know, you get through it. Women that have babies, God bless you. You know, you get pregnant, you're like, oh, it's so awesome. And then you're like, whoa, you know, you have all of the side effects and you're sick. And then, you know, I've had two or three friends and some fit influential ambassadors that have had their baby and this past December. And I'm like, I, I don't know how you do it because if I, I think if I were to ever have a baby, I would get down to the point of labor and just be like, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it because it's going to hurt so bad, it's going to hurt so bad. And I don't guess that any mom that has had a baby gets to that point is like, 
no big deal. This is going to hurt like a mother. Bring it on. You know, maybe some people have that kind of a good attitude, but they know it's going to hurt. I look at Danielle's blog post and she's like, here's what happened. Here's what happened. Here's what I was feeling at that time. Here's whatever. And then after all of that delays, you know, I mean, just a, a crazy birth story she had. She goes, then you got to go to her blog, Kitten Agogo. That's her blog read her birth story. She's like, and then I held this baby in my hand and all of that didn't matter. So no matter what it is in life, you're going to get there and you're going to deal with it. It doesn't mean that it's um, extraordinary. Danielle can still look back as most mothers and go, oh my God, I remember, you know, my feet were swollen. I was screaming. I was in so much pain, but they got through it. You, you handled it. I've talked about this before in some of my other blogs. You'll, you'll deal with it. So instead of spending so much time beforehand, before some event or before a confrontation or before a conversation, thinking of all the things that could go wrong, just know that whatever happens to you, you'll deal with it. You know, we have all this snow outside we'll deal with it. You know, if you, if you have to be somewhere and you're stuck in traffic, you'll deal with the consequences. It doesn't mean they might not be bad. You know, if you're stuck in traffic and you left and you missed a flight, you might have the consequences of you missed a flight, you missed your meeting, you didn't get the business. But it's, it's not like you got stabbed and you're, you know, you're dead. Um, it, we always think that things are so much worse and when you just kind of relax into it and know, I'm going to deal with it. I can't control the traffic situation. I can't control that there are 12 feet, you know, 12 inches of snow coming my way and that it's changed our plans for today with my boss and with so many other things, but specifically with my boss, because I realized how much I was completely off base. Every single time he would send me an email, it would be like three words and there was no expression, no, you know, high fives, smiley faces. He'd be like, thanks. And I would look at an email and I'd be like, okay, um, so all he said was thanks. Does that mean he's pissed? Is he mad? Is he talking to somebody? Is I, you know, and then I would sit there and wonder, what did that email where he just said thanks mean? Does that mean thanks he's mad? Does that mean thanks I'm getting fired? Does that mean thanks, blah, blah, blah? And I go through all this stuff, and then we get on the phone, and again, <laughs> he wasn't Mr. Hey, Kelly, what's up? Oh my God, it's so awesome to talk to you. But I, I wouldn't ever get fired. And then I started to think about things like, wait a minute, every single time I go to D.C., and I'm flying on the plane and I'm getting myself all worked up and, and I know they're going to make me go to happy hour and I don't want to go to happy hour because all I want to do is work out and he's going to make me do this. And I would go and, you know, I'm not going to tell you guys I had a great time. I, I didn't want to go to happy hour. That's not my thing. But nothing was ever as bad as I made it out to be. And there was a time, this is not professional of me to say, but I'm, I'm just being honest with you. There was a time when I was at my job and I had interviewed at several other companies because I, I wanted to get a new job and those other positions didn't work out. I realized there was a reason they didn't work out because I was meant to do what I'm doing now with Fit Fluential, okay? So those doors had to close. I had to be at this job that I hated and these other jobs didn't work out so that I felt absolutely helpless and it made me aware that I needed to do something and that is why this company exists that I'm in. But I realize in retrospect that I was making something up that just didn't exist. And because of that, I can now look back on that situation and go, I'm doing it again. Because I just did it today with a relative that I had to write to and say, hey, I think we're gonna have to you know, reschedule what we're doing. And this person wrote back and said, thanks. And I'm like, oh, I bet she's mad. I think he's, I think he's pissed off. Should I write him back? Should I say this? And I'm like, what are you doing? You know what? What you did is not anything, you, you know, you're making up all of these, these situations that don't exist and you are sitting here when other people, they just aren't thinking about you that much. There's a quote out there that says something to the effect of, if we realized how little people thought of us, we would, we would be astonished and we would spend that much time, that much less time worrying about what other people think of us. I spent so much time obsessing over how much I thought my boss hated me when in fact I realize now he didn't hate me. He actually thought I had tremendous potential. Um, we just had different styles. He had a different management style. I wasn't used to it and I was resistant 
to that management style because it was uncomfortable. It was taking me out of my comfort zone. He's very reports oriented, tracking, planning, blueprint, everything I've talked about in my past videos that now I appreciate and I understand and I see, wow, that's a huge truck. There's a massive truck out in my neighborhood. United, that's a mover? Sorry, you just don't usually see trucks that big in our neighborhood and I had a big truck. Maybe my truck was that big, I guess. Why am I saying? I have no idea. I'm getting, see what I'm doing? I'm getting distracted again. Anyway, the 15 minutes. What a bummer of a day to be moving. I mean, let me tell you guys, the snow and the storming that's gonna happen, it's gonna be like, I think a high of minus 20 degrees today. I'm not forgetting my point. Anyway, after I, ha I was at this job, I had interviewed at three different companies, most of whom I believe are my clients now. Again, all things happen for a reason, right? Um, interesting. I'm so distracted. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so I, had, I was working at a job I hated. I was making myself miserable. Um, and and I, I didn't get these other jobs. And so then I remember there was this moment in time where, and, and again, this is illustrating so many points that I've learned about myself. I, I had founded the company, okay? I put up the website for Fit Fluential in April, 2011. I didn't quit my job until August, but between April, 2011 and August is when Fit Fluential grew so fast that I literally had to quit my job. But the reason I didn't quit before that I wanted to, but it was because I wanted that safety net. I wanted to know that I had X amount of revenue, that I could pay myself, you know, a really nice fat salary, um, that the business was a sure thing. And all of those things were based out of fear. Okay, let's be real. I was scared that I would quit my job to start a company and it wouldn't be an outrageous success and everyone would laugh at me. And I was scared that I would start the company and be broke and um, yada, yada, yada. Scared, how am I gonna manage my bills? Well, when I finally started at that time, when I knew that it was time to, you know, closer to August, remember I went to Florida first and my friend Kelly started talking me through all this stuff. She's like, okay, so let's think about these things, you know? And I started to look and I, I just laid out for myself very simply the risks and the rewards and what did I really feel I was supposed to do? And I made a decision didn't mean that I knew. It's like having a baby. You know, those women that have babies, they don't know how much the pain is going to be when they have the baby. They don't know. Some people say, oh, it was nothing. I didn't feel anything. It was no big deal. Then you have other people that say it was the worst pain I've ever felt. I've had the same thing. People say that about getting your, you know, I've had my belly button pierced or tattoos. Some people get a tattoo and they say it's the most extraordinary pain they've ever had. Some people say it was nothing. I remember when I got my, my belly button pierced and people were like, oh, the belly button's the worst. And then I went in and of course I was like sweating to death, terrified because of all of that stuff I took into there, into that decision and that process beforehand. When really, Getting my belly button pierced, I've done it two times. I'm obviously not meant to have my belly button pierced because it tends to get infected every time, but it didn't hurt at all. Other people said it was the worst thing ever. They're like, I can get anything else pierced in my body but that. I can get my face pierced, it doesn't hurt, whatever. The thing is, is about my, my job, there was a point in time where when I was still scared about not having a big cushion of money um, to, to quit my job and start this company, I'm like, well, Maybe if I got fired, then I could, I would have at least unemployment income because if they fire you, they'll have to give you COBRA, they'll have to, because then I'd have health insurance and then I'd have um, uh, unemployment, so that would be some income and then I could be okay not paying myself and I'd just, you know, do some, some blogger work for, for some companies. And I thought all that through and then I was like, I realized a couple months went by because I thought, well, they hate me so much, I'm sure they'll fire me. You know, I'm sure that if I, you know, I don't do this and, and he's gonna fire, I could not get fired. It's not like I was going in and doing anything scandalous, but you know, I got to this point where I'm like, wait a minute, here I think that these people hate me and that I'm the biggest useless, they, they, they think I'm useless, they can't stand me, they can't wait to get rid of me, but guess what, they, they didn't fire me. In fact, I almost felt like I could do something really obnoxious and not get fired. So I, all of this big Babylonathon to you is to tell you how 
obsessing over what people think and furthermore assuming when you make you know there's that old adage around that says when you make assumptions you make an ass out of you and me if you haven't heard that take the word apart ass you and me um it it, it really is true but it's it's more like you make an ass out of yourself because i spent so much time when i was employed at my last job obsessing over how those people hated me and you know what or any of the, there's only a few. Well, okay, I don't want to make, that's the wrong statement. I was going to say none of those people are in my life now, so that was wasted energy. There are people that are in my life, and guess what? A lot of those people, which will go to another video I'll talk about, which is just, you know, relationships, integrity, what you give out, you get back. A lot of those people that I worked with at that agency have either left and gone to another agency or they're still there or whatever, but guess what? They're now in my life in some way, either involved in Fitfluential because they're in fit, into fitness or they're working at another agency and they brought me business. So these people that I thought hated me and couldn't stand me, you know, just because they're not high-fiving you and giving you the type of feedback that you want, that's the thing. The more you start to realize that you can't you can't decide, I'm going to be in a good mood and I'm going to feel confident today if all of these people do this. Because you can never, this might sound really simple to some of you, you can't control what other people do, period. I don't care if it is your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your boss, your parents, your brothers. Somebody's going to be in a bad mood someday and give you some kind of feedback that you don't like. Somebody's going to say something you don't like. Somebody is going to tell you they disagree with you. Somebody's going to confront you. Somebody's going to backstab you. Somebody's going to um, betray you. That's, that's just life. And once you realize that the only thing that matters as far as what my attitude is, what I believe in myself, what I can do, and, and who decides if I'm happy or sad, it's just me, okay? The less that you are dependent on feedback from other people, the more that you are in control of your destiny. That sounds really Oprah, really Tony Robbins, I know that, but it's just the truth, people. The more that I realize, like, hey, here's the deal. <laughs> My old boss is just not that kind of guy. He's not that kind of guy that's high. I mean, I would have to ask him. I'd be like, can you give me a high five? Can you give me a fist pump? Can you give me a, ah, let's go, anything. And he'd be like, and I don't care if he's watching this video. He knows it, okay? Guess what? In my own company, there are people that are the same way. So I think God's trying to teach me a lesson to be like, you got to chill out, Kelly. Not everybody's going to high five you all the time. High five yourself. That's right. So I have learned, and I always have to keep learning, to think less about what other people think and spend less time making assumptions and thinking the worst. When you, when you text somebody and they text you back and they seem very curt or whatever, you don't know what's going on over there. Don't assume that because they only said thanks or okay, and they didn't go, okay, that sounds great, love you so much, bye-bye, kiss, kiss, that they're not happy. Maybe, you know, they just found out some horrible, um, you know, maybe somebody died. Maybe somebody got some bad news at the doctor. You never know what's going on. Don't make things there that aren't there, okay? Don't make mountains out of molehills. I've done it all my life, and now that I've learned to let go, and frankly, is it going to hurt you to go through life and start to think that, people really like you and believe in you versus people hating you? No, you know, because what are you going to do? If somebody hates you, you can't change that. The only thing that you are in control of is yourself. And once you realize that and stop worrying about other people and worrying about what they think of you, you will really start to direct your own life and frankly be, in, be in a, an impact on other people. So that's it. I've just shot almost an hour and a half holy crap, I have to go work out, okay? I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.